In this video, we're going to walk through how you can invoke predictions on Vertex AI endpoints from AlloyDB using SQL. This is functionality AlloyDB provides so that users don't have to manually build a custom integration for machine learning. Here's our project where an AlloyDB cluster has been created, and we will be using the primary instance in this cluster to invoke predictions. First, we need to grant this AlloyDB cluster permissions to access Vertex AI. To grant those permissions, we need the project number. To find it, navigate to the project dashboard and project number should be listed under project info. We're using a separate project for our Vertex AI endpoints. As you can see, we have a fraud detection endpoint deployed here already. Instructions to train and deploy this model will be linked in the description below. To grant permissions, go to the IAM page of the same project and click on Add. Paste the principle in the format mentioned in the documentation, and change the project number to the value we got from our AlloyDB project. Choose the Vertex AI user role so that AlloyDB clusters in that project can invoke predictions on Vertex AI. And finally, click Save. As we can see, the principle has been granted the necessary permissions, and now AlloyDB instances should be able to access Vertex AI endpoints. Note, in some scenarios, users might have to check the Include Google Provided Role Grants box to view the principle we just added in this list. Now, to finally invoke predictions on the endpoints, we need some details. Navigate back to the Vertex AI endpoints page. In this case, we want to invoke predictions on the fraud detection endpoint. Click on the Sample Request link. Take note of the endpoint ID and project ID. Also, note the region in which this endpoint is deployed. In this case, it's US Central 1. Now the final step is to invoke predictions on this endpoint using SQL. We will connect to the AlloyDB's primary instance from a client VM in the AlloyDB project. We are using the PGCLI client, which is a wrapper over PSQL to connect to the fraud database. Let's create a table fraud detection data, which will contain transactions over which prediction will be invoked to determine whether a particular transaction is fraudulent or not. For demonstration purposes, we'll load data from a CSV file into this table. Let's look at some rows in this table. Some of our data has been transformed to protect user identities and sensitive features. That's why we see the data in this form and columns named as v1, v2, etc. And some columns have been preserved as is, like time and amount. To invoke predictions, we'll be using a function named mlPredictRow. This function is provided by the Google Vertex AI extension for AlloyDB. To use it, we need to install the extension first using the create extension command. Now that the extension is installed, let's start with a query which runs predictions on some rows of our fraud detection data table. For each row, mlPredictRow will be called with relevant arguments. The first argument of the mlPredictRow function is the endpoint, and we've plugged in project ID, region, and endpoint ID into this format, which we got earlier from the sample request. The second argument is a JSON object with an instances key containing the actual data that we want to get the prediction scores for. We want to get individual prediction scores for each row, which is why row to JSON here is converting a row in the table to JSON. The response JSON object returned by Vertex will contain prediction scores in the predictions key, so here you see we're extracting data from the predictions key using this operator. Finally, we're limiting the number of rows to 500 just for demonstration purposes. Now, let's execute our query. The response will take a little time, so we're speeding up a bit here to get to the good stuff. This is the response returned by the query. We have a time column that is directly projected from the table, and fraud score column, which contains the prediction results. Class 0 here means the transaction is non-fraudulent, and class 1 means that the transaction is fraudulent. So for the first row, the prediction score corresponding to class 0 is 0 0.99, which is significantly higher than the score corresponding to class 1, meaning the model has predicted that this transaction is non-fraudulent. However, looking at our second row, the score corresponding to class 0 is only 0 0.1, which is significantly lower than the score corresponding to class 1, meaning the model predicted that this transaction is fraudulent. This query took around 14 and a half seconds to execute, because we're sending only one row to each request for Vertex AI as in 500 requests just got sent to Vertex AI to get predictions for the 500 rows. To improve throughput, we can send multiple rows in a single request to Vertex AI. Our next query will do exactly that. 
we're going to use group by clause to batch multiple rows together. Just to demonstrate, we're going to group on a random integer ranging from 0 to 4, meaning there can be at most 5 groups or batches. And since we're invoking predictions on 500 rows, the expected batch size would be about 100. Now the data under the instances key will be a list of JSON objects instead of a single JSON object like the previous query. We generate this list using the JSON mag function. Finally, we also then need to unpack the aggregated rows into individual rows. Unnest and JSON array elements functions are responsible for doing that work. Now let's run the query. We roughly see around a 21 times improvement, even though both the queries are invoking predictions on the same sets of rows. So just by batching, we can get significant performance improvements. The amount of performance improvement will obviously vary from case to case and depends on factors like network latency, batch size, number of parallel workers used by the queries, etc. If you want to see more in-depth demos coming for AlloyDB, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.